four days out from Election Day, and we know the tempers can run high, right? But even putting aside, say, the worst of the worst, it can also feel sometimes like even factual and reality-based citizens have seemingly little tolerance for opposing views these days, let alone jokes. And let me put it to you like this. If you can only laugh at things that you think are other targets, never jokes about things that you might identify with, you might be on your way out of a good attitude and towards making humor one more predictable, narrow cudgel of our endless culture wars. And who wants that? Certainly not my next guest, <laughs> Neil Brennan. <laughs> See how real that was? That was crazy. Yeah, Dude, that yeah. was the realest thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> that was what they call dead air, Ari. <laughs> Well, I do that. You don't know that I do that. You do the thing. You do the uh, the MSNBC thing where you say something very important and then just stare at the camera <laughs> while the audience listens to the air conditioner. <laughs> as you can see, we're here for, as promised, a live culture and humor segment. It's going to be midterm fallback. It, it, it sounds PBS. Branded something else. Uh, a live cult. Like I'm going <laughs> to like I'm going to play a, a didgeridoo or something. No, I didn't, I didn't bring it in the car. You didn't bring a digital. No. All yeah. right. Well, Neil Brennan, uh, I will tell you this up front. He's been associated largely with what people might think of as left of center comedy shows, civil rights sketches. But he also jokes about all kinds of things, including on his new special, the idea that some liberals are obsessed with judging other people. The problem being liberal is there's no amount of liberal that's ever liberal enough. Like if there's a bunch of Republicans standing around and someone comes up and goes, hey, I'm a Republican, they go like, come on in. There's a bunch of liberals standing around, a liberal comes up and goes, hey, I'm liberal. They're like, we'll see. <laughs> Is Neil on to something? Can you recruit more people to your ideas with a little more sense of humor and joy? Well, Neil's here to tell us. A little more background, he's a political satirist known for Comedy Central's groundbreaking Chappelle's show, co-creator and co-writer of that with Dave Chappelle. And he moved in front of the camera, a featured guest on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and writing, directing, and starring in the 2017 Netflix comedy special Three Mics, which is dark in places. He's here promoting a new Netflix special titled Neil Brennan Blocks, and it drops on Election Day. Welcome. Well, uh, a very long intro, but I think uh, <laughs> pretty well deserved. Hey, hey for you, hey. If, people, if people watch your comedy, they'll know you're not a self-congratulator. You're more of a, of, a, of a neurotic. So if you feel good, that's good. I'm going to start with the punchline there. You are joking about the idea that some people on the left seem to be what? Intolerant? Uh, I think we're running too, too tough a bargain. I think it's just there's no, it's all purity. Everything's a purity test uh, kind of all the time. Like, I'm, I'm vegan, and I'll be like, I'm vegan, and my buddy Josh, who's super liberal, will be like, uh, you know, I'll be like, I don't eat meat. And he'll be like, really? I don't eat food. So, like, there's, there's <laughs> always a level above whatever you're doing as a liberal, somebody's doing a better version, a more liberal version of that. Does that relate to a kind of political competition or... The, uh, the deeper problem of vanity and politics becoming a, a self-expressive uh, way that we want to show our goodness. Well, yeah, I think that we're less religious and that this has taken the place of it. Mm. That's the thing I would say about the, you know, the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King was basically saying, like, be, don't be racist and I'll get you into heaven. Right? <laughs> was that it? And that kind is that a direct of, quote? The, it, 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 he's a reverend. The, the idea of it is when you do, you do what a reverend says, he's going to talk to the yeah. bouncer, you're going to get it. Yeah. Now, what do, we don't get anything. Yeah. We get, we're on the right side of history. That's what a buddy of mine says. Like, you get, uh, you get to be on the, you get like a sort of tip, you get a, a tote bag. You get a PBS tote bag. Well, shout out to tote bags. Sure. I mean, I love a free merch of item. But, your jokes are making that deeper point. That's what's, I think, really interesting. They're making the deeper point that politics is important because it affects people's lives. But if politics is about your self-branding, and we live in a highly branded digital culture, that that's questionable. I want to show another part from the new special. And again, election night, so people find they need to tune out. They might, that might be where they go. Because I just showed something where you're kind of hitting the left. This is something where you're kind of just hitting anyone who's ignorant and hasn't paid attention to what we might call widely available information in the culture. Let's take a look. I was talking to a white lady. She just says, I had no idea 
things were so bad between black people and the police. I was like, yeah, there's no way you could have known, unless you listen to any song by a black person ever. <laughs> like, what do you think the police was about, lady? This kid's got some. <laughs> Speak on that joke. Uh, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a thing that happens in hip hop. I don't know if you like hip hop, but, um, but there's a thing that happens where there'll be long lists of names of, uh, generally speaking, the rapper's friends who have died at the hands of police. Mm -hmm. I've never heard it in a white song mm. <laughs> ever. And uh, like lots of hip hop songs, there's just lists of guys that have been murdered or... Well, or, it's an oral tradition that is that is deeply somber, but is very normalized because it's such a part of the culture. Like, there's an early song that Jay has, this, this is the memory of Don Roy Henry, Too Much Fire to Catch a Friendly, and if you're from Chicago, you might know that name, but that was not, sadly, quote-unquote, one of the national names like a George Floyd. Right. But as you say, yeah, no, if you're at all in tune... You've been hearing about that, and the information is available that, oh, this was another unarmed person who was shot down. Yes. Uh, and then, and I, the second part of that joke is like, what about uh, uh, I shot the sheriff by Bob Marley? And the woman says, uh, yeah, but he didn't shoot the deputy. Um, <laughs> and also, that's an Eric Clapton song. So, so not well, even, both, mo most yeah. people don't, no one know what I'm saying. It's Bob Marley's song, and then Eric Clapton stole it and covered it. Um, so, so, uh, so, but that's, I'm sure a lot of white people don't know. Anyhow, long story. I don't even, we don't need to shame people that don't know about it, right? I, like, I don't do, there's no shame here. There's only dead air, never shame. That's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Let's throw some dead air out there real quick. I'll do it with you. I'm not afraid. Uh, wow, that was pretty great. Pretty crispy dead air. Um, what else is on your mind, buddy? We're ending with the dead air. Are That's we, are we done? Yeah. We're done. It's that quick. Wow. But I'd love to have you back. That was actually not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the honesty.